Bellamy is financial analyst Fiona Friedfeld. Good evening. Good evening, Lucy. So uh, everybody's talking about China being a super power, super economic power, but there is a but. There is a but, and a but is called debt. Debt, very simple, on Chinese bank balance sheet from 2008, it increased by 15,000 billion dollars. Wow. It's a huge number. Today, it's totaling 24,000 billion dollars. So 15, I can't say the number. 15,000 billion dollars. 15,000 billion dollars. How do you start to even... To count. To it's count. exactly, it's another figure which is simpler to understand. It's Chinese total debt today represents 2.5 times the GDP of China, which is a huge number. Uh, not only is like for private companies and... Let's take you take the Chinese company this year in 2014. They will pay 1,000 billion on serving the debt, you know, paying interest on the debt, yeah. which is twice as much as the U.S. Treasury is paying each year. How do you get out of a crisis? This is exactly the, in, the this good, amount. This is exactly the good question to ask, and you also have to add the public debt because public debt for the past two years have been went up by 70 percent, reaching 3,000 billion. Uh, U.S. dollar. And how do you get that from, from this? The Chinese government is doing what uh, the U.S. government didn't do in the U.S. with Lehman Brothers. You know, with Lehman Brothers, they let it go. They say it will give a lesson to the market and did not understand that it was too big to fail, that it was a systemic risk on the entire finance in Europe, in Asia, in the world. Chinese, what they're doing now, one company doing solar panel went bankrupt only for $10 million. Usually the Chinese in the past, they were like putting money to avoid Chapter 11. This time, they, they let the, the company went through Chapter 11 and to, to give a strong signal to the CEO, to the owner, to say, you're a stakeholder, you have to be responsible, you have to manage the risk. How, Lionel, how is it going to affect the status, like the world status of China? In, in a sense, is you need some debt to fuel the growth, okay? But it's impossible to have too much debt. Otherwise, we'll have, uh, you know, investors won't have confidence anymore into your market. So now they're starting to do cleanup in China. And at the end of the day, the government, you know, is uh, owning all the banks and is controlling everything. But now the, 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 the Chinese government is introducing capital market rules into China to teach actually CEOs and other corporates how to uh, behave properly into a capital market. You know, you talked about the investors and maybe... Um not investing anymore in China. We know that there are a lot of Israelis who are investing in uh, China and in the economy in China. Is it starting to actually affect Israelis maybe to step back? Not sure, because I think a big cleanup will take place. You know, people, company will merge. They will, you know, uh, the bank are going to consolidate. You know, so, you know, they're going to, to take a really strong step. They don't want the economy to, you know, to, to wind down. And the Chinese are very smart because just yesterday, the Central Bank of China just announced on the RMB, the yuan, you know, the Chinese currency, that they're going to, the currency is given, the price is given every day by the Central Bank, but they're going to have a band the flotation of the band plus or minus three percent, and the, the the price of the the yuan will you know will float with a bid and ask like the euro, like the dollars, and we'll see in one year, five years, ten years, you know U.S. dollar, euro, and RMB are going to be like free uh, currency in the world because they have to adapt to the capital markets. Very interesting, uh, Lionel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now to Myanmar rockers, the side effect band.